Okay, basically this is the, one of three of my favourite rods. Um, my intention is to strip the jute plum, the old reel seat, and to replace it with cork and a new Fuji reel seat. So let's get started. Pretty straightforward. There you go, there's a difference. Don't try and cut down into the bank. Just take the top off. Okay. I'm not in the bank anywhere there. Just go back and start this part again. That blade hasn't done that much work actually. Okay, one. So just showing a witness for the blank there. You don't have to go crazy on this. Leave it flat, if anything, aim the blade up a bit. Just showing witness to the blade, yeah. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> I should point out, I've never actually done this before. You could be getting that. There's a bit of tape there that's obviously been used for packing out. See the importance of a sharp blood. It just wants to be laying on the blank, not. not cutting into it anywhere. Okay, we're getting there now. I'm just really like you know, the blades flat virtually on the blank, just teasing the last of that. Just teasing the last of that off. I'm told. The way to do this is just take it. Okay, now here, this section here, this sort of six, you know, five inch section here, I think that's tape underneath, masking tape underneath. Because um, as I understand it, sometimes they used to have a parallel reamed uh, sleeve and then tape up the low spots. So, Hopefully, oh yeah, <laughs> it won't be short of lubricant, will it? Oh, what a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. We might have to give that a bit of a try. Okay, this isn't actually a Dremel, it's a, a wolf. Rotary Crafter multi-tool. Other Rotary Crafter multi-tools are available. Right. Okay, the plan is to cut through this piece of metal. And we may as well do it on the axis of the... Uh... So I have discovered that the... <laughs> This part can be done quite happily on low revs. Yeah. 
And the frets a little bit higher than that. But the metal itself will need to be Yeah, that's all open. So the metal needs to be up on high ribs for metal. And while I'm thinking about it, something just flicked off and hit me in the mouth. So we'll just cover that piece of the blank up. I've got a feeling that's about to disintegrate. That's true. That's it goes. Don't like it. Okay, let's put that down there out of the way. Uh, now I'm reliably informed. Cut the other side. Probably make life a bit easier, wouldn't it? So we can just bend that down. And she should. Be careful any sharp edges coming off that blank. Job done. Now they tell me this is a doddle. But of course I haven't gone right through the plastic there, so we just need to get that part done. Tad there, if that's a real word. Keep that card out, Peter. <laughs> no, that's all clear. Just got to give it a bit more welly. Thank you. So like the adhesive's taken it. There you go. Job done. Well, that's mostly masking tape there and there. That's adhesive there and there. So I think what we'll do is change that blade around because that was getting blunt fairly quickly. They're coming from this end. But gently. I'm getting a bit twitchy now because I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on there. Let's get this. discovered in the past that you can be just a bit too confident you know and uh, as soon as you take your eye off the ball it turns around and bites you so just take your time I think we'll give that a bit more give that a bit of a flash with the heat Yes. 
certainly does the job, doesn't it? Just take your time. Yeah. Might have peel some of that your fingers. Yes. Okay, so I'd like to get this as clean as possible, even though it's all going to be covered over again. Just makes me feel better knowing that I've, I've given it my best shot. You know? My father once told me everything you do, Peter, give it your best shot. You can do no more than that. And if it's not good enough for some, well, I hope that's probably more their problem than yours, isn't it? Right, I'm going to carry on cleaning these off, get this other part off. It's coming up quite well so far, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, very brief recap. Uh, I stripped this rod down in preparation to uh, replace it with cork. So I stripped the duplon from the, uh, the rod with a Stanley knife, laid pretty much flat against the blank, and stripped down like so, all the way around, cleaned that off. Unscrewed the bottom of the grip, took that away, slid it down, took it away. I then cut through the fore part there. Uh, I used a Dremel. Other rotary tools are available, etc, etc. You could use a junior hacksaw, but I would recommend if you do use a junior hacksaw that you cut at an angle like that rather than trying to cut the length of the blank. Prize that off, that actually slid over the whole thing and came back down. Uh, I used a rotary cutter again. Uh, other people I understand use a Stanley knife to split down through the grip itself. That came off. Two lots of masking tape underneath the, the reel seat. Some uh, masking tape underneath the Duplon cover itself. Stripped those off. Where there was adhesive left, I gave it a wrapped the rod up and, to protect it and then gave it a flash with the um, hot air gun, softened the adhesive up, stripped it off with a standing knife. And that's where we are now, ready to start thinking about the, the cork. The cork I'm going to use um, is double flared Harrison supplied cork. Um, it's about two feet long or it's actually, I think, 600 mil, but you know what I'm saying, two feet long. I only need um, 20, 21 inches of it. So I'm going to make a cut now here. This would be the for the butt section length. And then later I should just cut back here, inch and a half, and we use this top for, for in front of the grip. Now, I haven't got one of those fancy um, um, cutters that they seem to use on all the... Uh, programs um, but I've got a 32 tooth TPI junior axle blade brand new and marked it with tape and it's just a matter I think of taking my time <laughs> Well, to be fair, it didn't turn out too badly. Just a little rub on a, on a piece of sandpaper, I think, just to um, make sure it's real square. But I'm pleased with that, to be honest with you. Mind you, early days, isn't it? Early days. Something I may have failed to mention is that the cork um, is supplied uh, with a tapered bore, not a parallel bore, it's a tapered bore. Uh, the butt end there is 16mm 
ID uh, and the front end comes down to 14 millimeters. I worked um, my blank is 14 and a half mil at the butt end, coming down to 13 and a quarter roughly um, here at the whipping. I've just got to sort that out a little bit. So I worked it out that if I, when I cut it at uh, 19 and a quarter inches, that would opening would be 14 and a half mil. Um, this front end was obviously a little bit too tight. It was about a millimetre um, too small. But I just very, very gently took a, a round file uh, and a little bit of glass paper and just opened that up a tad. Um, but this one worked out really, really well. I was really pleased because that's just just nice, you know. That's a nice fit. So what I'm going to have is minimal clearance there. A few turns of, of masking tape every so often and then the adhesive in between them. So I'm pleased about that. Um, front end, huh, fingers crossed. Let's just wet that down a little bit. Just, I didn't want to open it up too much because obviously I want to get a bit of a gap at the other end, but there you go. Happy days. Um, this is a winding check. It's, I was going to get aluminium. Uh, this is American, I think it's called Deering. I guess it's just a type of plastic. So that'll be on first. Obviously in the front end. And job done. So, good. This is the dry fit up. Um, I'm pleased with it so far. It all seems to be as I initially wanted it. Um, like I said previously, because I'm going to be working down the blank, um, it's got to be, I've got to sort of get it right as we go. So all this needs to go back up to the top or up to the first uh, guide. And then I've marked there, that's that's where the, I've got sort of three mil inside. The, the butt is, the blank is three mil shorter than the butt there. Uh, just to protect the end. So now I'm going to start uh, masking. And as I do each section, I'm going to do sort of one gap, one gap, one gap. I'll come down and hopefully then on each one it should just start tightening up there. Yeah, so if I know that if, I know if that's tight in there, that, that it's about right. Just just wants to be interference, and then go back up, put the next tape on, come down, and hopefully it will start tightening up just and that's before that, and then it will be right. Anyway, I've not done it before, as I say, so it's going to be. Uh, um, Trial, I'm going to say trial and error, but hopefully not too many errors. Just take my time, take it easy, and see how it goes. What did occur to me was that as the blank is a taper and uh, the cork is an internal taper, if I've got this part right, technically, if I did the same number of turns on each one, it should have, you know, it should. Um, be right all the way down for the both tapers and although i checked them as i went one at a time it, it, it worked out quite well i was some i was warned um to do all my tape wraps in one direction and to understand that when you put the glue in the adhesive in epoxy and you should turn the rod slowly as it comes down um and not turn it <laughs> towards the end, if you like, of the last wrap, because obviously you wouldn't want that uncurling. So just to turn it gently, I've chosen that way to go. And uh, it's just, it's just coming, you know, it just feels, 
about right. So I could say I'm pleased with that. And I think I'll set the rest of them up first before I think about any adhesives. We're at the stage now ready for uh, epoxy in the handle, the first part of the handle. And I'm, I'm quite happy with all that. I've checked it all through. <laughs> Made doubly sure that all the components are in their rightful place. So uh, check ring, top cork, that's real seat, uh, butt cork. So that's all right, all fair ready to go. Now I've got, um, there are a variety of, of uh, epoxies that you can use. Two part epoxy that I'm recommending, is recommended to me, has been recommended to me. But there's Rod Bond, there's U40, there's a, a whole range of stuff. Um, but Arrow Dot seems to fit the bill as well, as well as Gorilla Epoxy, two part epoxy. The problem with a lot of them is that the, the um, they're, they're sort of for professional guys who. Um, We've done it several times before. And don't forget, this is my first put rodeo on this. Um, I actually got initially the crystal, Araldite crystal, two-part epoxy, thinking, you know, it's guaranteed crystal clear, etc., etc. Great. Um, what I hadn't realised was, though, that uh, it's a five-minute epoxy. So you've got a five-minute working time, 20 minutes handling time, full strength in two hours. Well, you know, it's not going to happen. So I went back to the standard, which is... Uh, just standard Arrow uh, two part. It's um, 90 minutes working time, handling time is eight hours, so it'll sit overnight happily. Full strength in 14 hours. Well, I'm in no rush for a full strength, you know. So I'm going to start, I'm going to use uh, the standard Arrow Dye. It'll give me plenty of working time. If I make any mistakes, I've got time to get it apart again, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so we'll take it from there. Now, obviously, not doing this before, not having done this before, I don't really know how much I'm going to need. So I'm going to do a half a page, as it were. I don't know where I've got this old trick of using um, glossy magazines. Okay. Well, I'll leave the camera running, but you don't need to see me mixing up the epoxy, do you? 30 seconds, they say. No rush. Oh, <laughs> I just realised why exactly why all those magnum lollies. You just cut the end off square. It's an ideal little spatula. And totally disposable as long as you keep your appetite up for magnum lollies. Well, I don't have any problem with that, there's a bucket full of them out there. Okay, now this is a bit tricky because I'm gonna have to do it left handed. Can't remember where I am now. Okay. I'd imagine it's easier going lengthy ways, but like that, and then perhaps spread it around a bit. I don't know. Like I say, this is my first time, so as long as it's on there, I'd imagine it's not going to make a lot of odds. I'm hoping any excess will get squeezed down. I can put a bit up there near the top. Uh, we'll get squeezed down as I turn the blank. As I turn the cork, I'll probably cut this out, lads, because it's getting a bit to uh, here. I hope this doesn't fall off. We're going to be uh, all sugar. We're going to be 
push an excess down there with it. I can't see anything that I've missed. Oh, there's a bit there. Look at that, you used every bit of that. Okay. If I start gibbering, it's because I'm using acetone to keep my hands clean and keep everything clean. And I'm told that that's quite acceptable. Um, but of course, the way I do it probably isn't. Right, turning it towards me. And just gently. Well, you can feel that just trying to sort of get a bit sticky. So keep an eye on the front edge because if it starts building up too much, you need to go get your scraper in there and just take a bit of it off. There's just a little bit of a build up now. Let's go back a bit. So there's no, oh, there's something else apparent. You could get a vacuum in there. I don't, I don't know how often that happens. Oh, that isn't, that isn't, look at that. It's just nice. Keep going. It's just getting a bit tight. Well, I am going to just nick a bit off that there. Right, I'll go back to this and just check my... Okay, that's good. So that should be, and it is. Um, a couple of mil. That's tight there. I don't know if you can see that part. That's just recessed there. Good. Good. I'll right, carry on with the rest. Right, all the rods are glued up now. All the cork is glued up and set overnight and ready to go now so we're moving now on to the real seat and um, yet again I've marked the top end just a bit of blue tape there just to give me a reference and the plan is to put three wraps of uh, masking tape the first one is probably three or four mil above the cork and the last one will be three or four mil below the end of the real seat it's just to allow the adhesive of the, the epoxy to um, fully wrap around uh, and give a watertight um, seal so that this masking tape doesn't potentially get wet um, just a point of interest this the blank is 14 mil in diameter there and I've just I have found OCD or whatever the expression is um, that 10 complete wraps or 10 complete turns of masking tape increases that diameter by 1.5 millimeters so you'll get a rough idea of how many times you need to go around and to, to know how many times you've been around I just simply put a a mark on like so and just start wrapping you know oh, one two etc Okay, I've wrapped these three and just in case you're wondering why I use blue tape and um, pale tape, cream colour, whatever it is, uh, this is decorator's tape and I think a bit like post-it notes, it, it's sort of sticky but it doesn't leave any residue and it's easy to take off and it doesn't take any paint or anything else off with it so I tend to use that where I can. Um, I cleaned the inside of the real seat as best I could um, even so it's still got some sort of I don't know what on it so after um, there you go it's just a nice just a nice fit after uh, checking it for, 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 for fit as it were I actually peeled back a roll of tape I tore it off and replaced it because it had left really quite dark witness marks and I suspect that the adhesive wouldn't adhere as well as you'd like it to. However, here we are now. Huh, he said. 
and that's just that's just a nice fit. Um, we've reached the stage now where uh, the real seat's ready to go, and now um, I'm just going to whip two layers of whipping here on just where this uh, the red is there because when this is assembled the well, I think the, the whipping check for one of a bit is a um, a tad loose on the blank so I'm just going to run a couple of layers two layers of uh, whipping along here just that area there to bulk it up uh, so that it'll centralise when it all comes down and sits nicely there'll be a little bit more uh, there'll be a run of masking tape underneath this piece of cork here and that'll all square everything up so it'll all sit straight on the blank um, okay I've completed that little bit of whipping that I spoke about just there I've also taken the trouble of uh, marking the blank so that uh, the guide the rule seat lines up um, so I know it's fully in line with the guides uh, prior to gluing it up I'm going to use the five minute crystal this is purely because when we get to the top here I don't want any any signs of any glue if there's anything um, in the whipping I don't want it to be able to see that it's, so it's crystal clear that's what I'm looking for I'm just going to glue this as I did the butt, paying attention to the black where the blank is, and then just a smear on the masking tape. Uh, so I'm using the five minute one. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to bother videoing this. I'm going to be focusing very, very much on getting this bang on first time, because I guess I won't get a second time. Well, that's all three rods completed. Glued up uh, the rear seats front ends, uh, finished the butt caps, just, just took the time on those, made sure that the uh, the lettering was horizontal to the main axis of the rod, um, dash of uh, epoxy in the end there and just a little piece of tape to hold it in position while it went off um, and there we have it, the three rods rebuilt with cork and new wheel seats this was never meant to be a complete tutorial um, you know this is my first time on this this was just me doing it really and if I've learned anything from this it's that it, I need to take my time be slow be methodical think things through have everything to hand that you need at the time especially when you're using the epoxy because you can't be wandering off, especially if you use the five minute stuff, you can't be wandering off looking for something in the cupboard somewhere. Um, be clean, keep everything clean and tidy. Uh, lots of you know, spare rags and bits and pieces. I used acetone for clearing up bits uh, of, of, of uh, epoxy that had got in the wrong place, as it were. Um, I'm told you have to be very cautious of using it around paint. It can lift the paint, so perhaps a denatured alcohol would, would have been a better choice but as I've got a gallon of acetone in there for my copper work it seemed ideal um, yeah slow and, slow and sure change the blade out on you if you're using a, a Stanley knife craft knife change the blade regularly it, it blunts very very quickly especially when you hit the epoxy uh, and for stripping the duplon down the blade nearly well the best part flat against the blank and just take your time and it'll come actually come off like butter if you if the blade's sharp likewise with the removing the old reel seat uh, once the duplum below the uh, adjusting screw there is is clear that just unscrews and, and drops straight off um, I used uh, a dremel to cut both the metal and the plastic down the uh, that very convenient slot in the in the in the real seat. I've seen guys use 
Stanley knives. I tried it. You have to put an awful lot of pressure on to get through there with a Stanley knife. Um, I just found it easy with the Dremel. Um, and likewise, you don't have to drive a Dremel to do the metal work there. You can use a hacksaw, but I would recommend going across at an angle. Uh, because I think if you go up and down, there's well, it's danger that you might mark up here with the blade. I thought because the, the rest of the rebuild had gone so well, I'd have a little attempt, make an attempt to um, to write the rod details on now. So I'm going to use a, a Mitsubishi uh, Posca pen, Uni Posca, which is an acrylic pen, um, 0.7 nib. The joys of the acrylic, I know everybody uses calligraphy pens and, and um, enamels, not everybody, a lot of people. Um, the joys of the acrylic means that if I make a mistake, and I've only made about 50 so far, uh, I can simply wipe off uh, the paint with a, a piece of a damp cloth, dry it right off and start again. However, let's give it a go. Make sure it's lined up on the centre. Right, there you go. <laughs> Not the most auspicious of starts. I think you need to be so confident and bold, but not crazy. You don't have to do it as if you were writing a letter. Of course, I've forgotten how to spell it yet. I mean, crikey. Well, I think you probably agree the C could be a little better. The rest of it I'm happy with. So, it seems to be so easy to scratch the back up. Look, the, the, this is where I personalise it with my name. And it's just got a couple of little bits of marking. That I'm not very happy with. No, leave it, Peter. That's good enough. That's, it's not good enough. I've given it a good shot, and I think it's turned out not too badly. So I'm going to leave that to dry off, and then um, it's all, all prepared underneath. I'll, I'll, I gave it a little bit of a Scott writing underneath before I started, so it's all ready to go. Uh, let that dry out for a good few hours and then uh, apply some epoxy over the top. So I've just completed the uh, two-part resin hardener um, coating for the lettering that I put on. Very straightforward. I used uh, LS Supreme it's called. One rod epoxy. I think the idea is there's enough for it not to do the whippings on one rod in there but there is plenty in there. I used a small syringe, I used two small syringes, and I put in 60, 60 I think they're millilitres, uh, of each hardener and resin mixed, and I only used a third of it for, for three rods. Those, you know, the four inch, five inch uh, whip in there. The directions you get uh, with the one rod epoxy are very comprehensive. Just I just followed those to the letter, and I had no issues at all. Uh, I applied it with a brush, small flat artist brush, and I just kept the rod turning, kept the rod turning, applied it, applied it, applied it. Once I'd, I was happy that I'd got, you know, got it on there, I then finished by wiping, oh, I had a small piece of masking tape just past the end of the lettering, a wrap of masking tape. I simply brushed out and turned the rod, brushed out and turned the rod, brushed out and turned the rod to get any excess away. Um, once I was satisfied that, that was okay, I simply took the masking tape off because I understand it's self-leveling and um, just got to follow instructions. It says turn them every minute for the first hour, 
um, I think that's probably other advice I had said that five or ten minutes is okay just if you see any sag just turn it uh, 180 degrees each time fortunately here I have a fly tires um, what's it called stone fly gifted to me um, rod turner so that one's looking after itself I'm quite happy with that and these ones these two just um, 180 degrees every few minutes and we see how it goes I made a little cardboard support up for this cut the notches just to make sure that the rod was sitting level you don't want it all drooping down one end um, ever so straightforward so comprehensive instruction I'd like to say a great big thank you to uh, Gary at the Tackle Box in Dartford, the rod builder there, for spending so much time with me explaining exactly what I needed to do. So any good bits that come out of this, thanks Gary, it's down to you. The bad bits are just my mistakes. Cheers.